Yo, what is up guys, Chillifeed here, and as promised, I'm back today with uploading part 2 with the second half of all the legendary grenade mods in Borderlands 3. If you missed part 1, I suggest you check that out as well. To not miss out on any of the grenades you can get, make sure to leave a like and maybe even subscribe if you enjoy these types of videos or find it at least a little informative. It would help me out a lot. If you want to know more about the grenade mechanics in this game, check out the video where I explain everything in detail to avoid any type of confusion. All of these grenade mods in this part 2 except for two pre-order bonuses can come from any lootable source in the game. I say this now once so I don't have to repeat myself over and over again. And with that out of the way, let's jump right into the video. Starting off part two on this beautiful Sunday, we have the Nagata grenade mod from Hyperion. The name, mechanics and the red text Belter Lauda are yet another reference to the TV show The Expanse, just like the legendary weapon Star Helix. It will never have any element and will always be a longbow grenade that spawns a ring of, I believe, eight grenades that will launch forward and explode on impact and deal less damage than I expected from 8 freaking grenades exploding on your enemy. I mean it looks awesome, sounds pretty satisfying, but the low damage it deals kinda ruins the fun. I believe today is the last day where Gigamine has an increased chance of dropping it, so if you're watching today and still want to get it, higher chances, Gigamine, Story Boss Fight, Promethea, Meridian Metropolex. I wonder what Albert Einstein would be thinking if he knew that his famous equation even made it into video games as a red text for the Quasar Grenade. This shock grenade also used to be in Borderlands 2 and has similar effects in Borderlands 3 where it creates a kind of black hole or singularity effect on impact that sucks in all of the enemies within its range, making them ineffective and dealing shock damage over time before it detonates to deal even more shock damage. In my opinion this is one of the best grenade mods for mobbing since you can make a whole wave of enemies completely ineffective and the damage is also pretty good, especially to take out their shields. The one I have is a longbow version, but the type of the grenade can change to anything depending on what manufacturer your grenade will be from. For example, Hyperion is longbow and Atlas is homing. This is definitely one of the better grenade mods, so hope for it to drop for you if you don't already have one. Okay, the red queen in my opinion just sucks. It is a grenade that will always be impact, divider and without any element. What that means specifically is that after throwing it, it will split into two grenades that are lined up horizontally with a laser connecting the two that can only really be effective if you can manage to hit an enemy with it long enough before it finally explodes. It is unbelievably inconsistent and unpredictable. The only thing worth mentioning about it is that the red hex and the name is a reference to Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. More specifically specifically to the Queen of Hearts that loses her temper a lot and whenever she does she screams off with the heads. I love all these references man. They can make bad gear so interesting in my opinion. Better luck next life. Out of the way! The first grenade of part 2 you could only get as a pre-order bonus from the deluxe or super deluxe edition is the Cheddar Shredder. But since it will always come with the prefix rubber, I will include it here in part 2. What this means is that it will always be a lob and bouncy grenade without an element that detonates up to 5 times on every bounce and for anyone who cannot guess what the red text make it rain refers to, it makes enemies drop cash when they are hit. The amount of cash is not too crazy though, just like the damage of this thing so another pre-order bonus you didn't miss out on. Similar to the Quasar, the Stormfront is also returning from Borderlands 2 with, with the same effect, it's always shock and is a great grenade for crowd control. This is a sticky Murph grenade that can come with any grenade type and will spawn multiple grenades after impact that will deal shock damage to any enemy within an insanely large radius. As Queen already told us with their song Bohemian Rhapsody, Thunderbolts and Lightning, very very frightening. I let the gameplay speak for itself.
I'm not quite sure if I was using the search wrong, if I miss anything about its mechanics or if this grenade is just straight up bad. What I do know is that it will always be an exploder type grenade mod that doesn't explode when hitting an enemy. Instead it will jump up to 5 times and create 3 Murph grenades on every jump that deal mediocre damage at best with a relatively small splash radius that you cannot really predict where they are going with all the random bouncing of the grenade. I honestly don't really know if the red text Dar she blows has any deeper reference to it but this grenade to me is not really worth getting anyway. Just like the Surge, Tina Sibidi Harper is a bouncy Murph grenade that is not really predictable. Unlike the Surge though, it deals some decent damage and really explodes on impact and has a reference to Tiny Tina herself and who doesn't love Tiny Tina. The reference is more specifically to a mission in Borderlands 2 with the red text hard today, bomb tomorrow, as a play on the phrase here today gone tomorrow and the design of the grenade resembles the badonkadongs from the mission. When you throw the grenade in Borderlands 3, it will explode on impact when hitting an enemy and bounces 7 times back towards the spot where it was thrown from and create 2 more child grenades on every bounce. It will always be without an element but still a lot of damage when you manage to hit your enemies. I have to apologize for the transfusion grenade right away, since the only footage I was able to record was footage that don't properly show off the mechanics. I wanted to load back into the game today, but for whatever reason the game decided to just delete more than half of my legendary grenades I had on this character. I guess this is finally the punishment for convincing second graders back in middle school that my Yu-Gi-Oh cards would be worth 100 euros, but I was willing to trade with them because I simply like their cards better. Anyways, the transfusion grenade is a transfusion grenade, who would have thought, that can come in any element and heals the user's health for 120% of damage dealt to them. It can even come with a single or double generator effect that heals the user's shield for either 30 or 60% of the shield damage dealt. That sounds great and all, but the damage it deals is not really high, so I found this grenade to not be very useful overall. No name. Next up is the second legendary grenade mod that you can only get as a pre-order bonus from the Super Deluxe or Deluxe Edition and with the Ultra Ball you can add one more thing to the list of things that you didn't miss out on when not buying a more expensive edition of the game. Do not taunt Happy Fun Ball is a reference to an old spoof commercial from the Saturday Night Live show and just like the Happy Fun Ball, the Ultra Ball can be fun to play with and look at, can be dangerous to the user and gets boring pretty fast because it likes the damage to be really fun. It will always be an exploding grenade that spawns a bunch of child grenades on impact that then will bounce around until exploding when hitting an enemy or after a certain time. It is just too hard to hit anything with the child grenades, especially when you're not in a building. It is fun to hear the grenades bounce and watch the confetti trail they leave though. <laughs> The very last legendary grenade and with that the end of part 2 is the Widowmaker. And I wish we would have ended this with a slightly more exciting and slightly better grenade than this reference to an Overwatch character. I will not even try to pronounce the red text but I will tell you that it translates to for better or for worse in English. The grenade creates somewhat of a landmine on impact and in my case I have a Murph version that creates 3 landmines and I have not seen any other variations of this grenade other than this so I believe it will either create one landmine or three. What's cool about these mines is that when an enemy gets close to them or after a certain time they will create three homing projectiles that explode on impact. What's not cool is the unbelievably low damage they deal. That's it. Cool concept, no damage, makes it pretty bad, wouldn't you agree? <laughs> Now 
that is it for all the legendary grenades and weapons that are in Borderlands 3 so far. Thank every single one of you who watches any of these episodes. I must say that I'm pretty proud to have gained almost 300 subscribers in less than a month and I will only try to improve my work for you guys from now on. I will continue over the next few days with testing the most fun and also powerful endgame builds for every character. I hope you will enjoy these as much as I enjoy making them for you guys. Thank you so much. Don't forget to leave a like if you found this video helpful or enjoyable and subscribe if you don't want to miss out for more Borderlands 3 content from me. Thank you so much and I see you in my next video. You do not want that.